for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another Madden 23 video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over all the leaks that have been coming out as far as player ratings. This is not the official player ratings video that has not officially dropped from EA, but there's been various uh, outlets on Twitter, lots of different websites reporting a lot of leaks when it comes to uh, Madden player ratings, specifically offensive player ratings like quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. The positions that are probably the most popular when it comes to man reading so it got to a point where i can't ignore it anymore and i'm going to make a video about it i'm going to show you guys the player ratings i'm going to give you guys my thoughts about it as always if you guys want to see more videos like this more player rings videos uh more madden 23 content Woo! you know stuff like that hit the like button let me know in the comments section i'll continue to do them other than that let's go let's get right in the video so i'm going to start off with quarterbacks and i'm not going to you know basically comment on every quarterback on the list but i am going to you know basically pick out the ones that are most interesting to me uh starting with the quarterbacks at the bottom here the one of the more interesting ones is all the way at 31 carson wentz Damn! the guy's a 70 overall he's sandwiched in between daniel jones and sam Darnold. now i don't know if he's a 70 overall rated player i know madden's never really been high on him as far as rating then rating has gone down consistently since his mvp caliber year back in 2017 but ultimately sandwiched between daniel jones and sam Darnold, who guys have never really done anything in the league uh, that's kind of embarrassing. So I don't like I said once again. I don't know if these are the official ratings. Wouldn't surprise me by any means because Carson Wentz has kind of taken a hit year after year after year. But he's looking like a guy who at this point uh, you wouldn't even want to use him as a quarterback. He's coming in under rookie quarterbacks like Malik Willis, who I'm pretty sure was a third round pick coming in at a 72 overall. That guy by his speed and arm strength alone will probably be a fun quarterback to use. But I'm sure his accuracies will be terrible. Moving up the list a little bit, we have another rookie quarterback in Kenny Pickett who's 74 overall coming in ahead of guys like uh, Tua coming in ahead of uh, rookies last year like Justin Fields uh, guys like Jared Goff um, you know Zach Wilson Trey Lance there's a lot of guys on here that Kenny Pickett just kind of jumps right over guys that are much higher rated prospects and drafted a lot higher uh, so to me I don't necessarily agree with that either the only way I really agree with that is EA always wants to have um, a fresh new player that people want to play with and if they're really if they're not very highly rated It makes them less fun to play with so it makes sense to me from that perspective to give these guys uh, Good starting ratings even though I don't think Malik Willis is anywhere near the prospect of Trey Lance or Zach Wilson Even though he's got the same rating. Uh, I just think that they want people to buy new copies especially fans of those fan bases want them to buy copies so that they can play with their new quarterback or play with a new player but ultimately I don't agree with that at all because if you look at like Ken like Trevor Lawrence who was the number one pick last year. He's a 75 overall. He's considered to be a generational talent. He probably just got messed up because he went to Jacksonville, which is a bad situation, played for a bad head coach, a bad organization, and he didn't have much success last year. But you can't tell me that he's him and Kenny Pickett are close at all when it comes to prospects. So that's something that, you know, the bottom half uh, is debatable. Then you have guys like Matt Jones, who in my opinion is only really there uh, because he's in the exact opposite situation where he had such a good situation, going to probably one of the best organizations in NFL history under one of the best coaches so he gets a 79 overall rating even though he was asked to do very little the guy won a game uh, last year throwing only two passes so moving on to the 80 overall rated guys Jalen Hurts coming in at an 82 overall is very surprising to me the guy was a Pro Bowl alternate last year so he did have a lot of success but that's a very high rating so they're rating him 15th with I think is somewhere where he is in the quarterback hierarchy somewhere in the 15 16 range but it's still really interesting to see him rate ahead of a guy like Kirk Cousins who was a pro bowler last year now as far as top 10 quarterbacks the only ones that i really have issues with uh joe burrow at an 89 overall after the year he had last year i know once again this this man likes to they like to go with consistency you're not going to get a 99 overall rating off of one really good year typically so consistently joe burrow's only had two seasons in the league but i think that he should be rated higher at least a 90 overall it's only one point but i really feel like when you look at him versus justin herbert i think i'd rather have Joe Burrow. I mean, Joe Burrow at least has made the playoffs. Joe Burrow went to a Super Bowl in just his second year, and he did it with a pretty suspect supporting cast. I mean, by no means was the Bengals last year looked at as a Super Bowl contending team. 
and somehow he still carried them with no offensive line and just had an amazing postseason. Uh, to me, I'm just very high on Joe Burrow, and a lot of people are very high on him. A lot of people think he's going to be the cover athlete in the upcoming uh, Madden 23 game. So to see him, if he's really an 89 overall, I really have a hard time believing he's going to be the cover athlete, number one. But number two, I just think he should be higher. I think he should be uh, ahead of Herbert, ahead of even Russell Wilson maybe, although that's a little bit harder to say because Russell Wilson's been so, so consistent over his career. But ultimately, the top 10, the only real issue that I have with it is I think Justin uh, Joe Burrow should be a little bit higher and uh, you know definitely ahead of Dak Prescott. He's ranked below Dak Prescott, which who would take Dak Prescott over Joe Burrow at this point in their careers? So next up, we're going to do receivers, and we're going to start off at the bottom. This list only goes to 19, but number 19 is uh, a very interesting one to me, and that's Jalen Waddell. Jalen Waddell definitely had a good rookie year. Um, I think he's a great player. I'm not arguing that, but it's surprising to see him already being an 87 overall, considering that um, you know he just felt like a little bit of a gadget player. I can't say that in all reality he's a well-rounded receiver at this point. It felt like they were finding ways to get him the ball in his hands because he's such an electric playmaker. I can't say like his things like his route running, uh, you know, things like awareness, stuff like that that you would imagine uh, a guy with an A7 overall to have. I can't imagine he has those things already. Uh, but but the, it's a dynamic pairing that's going to be between him and Tyree Kill. I mean, the speed alone was all you really needed. But now that I see him coming in an A7 overall, they seem to be thinking he, he just looks like a more well-rounded prospect. That's just going to make the Dolphins that much more of a dangerous team. Other than that, I don't really have a lot of issues. Uh, Jamar Chase, though, at number 10, uh, I do feel like he should be rated a little bit higher after the dynamic year that he had. Um, a 90 overall, I mean, it's a very good rating, but the, but the stats he put up compared to somebody like Terry McLaurin, say, uh, Mike Evans is just, you know, consistent. He's like 90 every year. But Terry McLaurin, who's a very good player as well, has never put up the statistical output that Jamar Chase put up. He's also never really had the quarterback that uh, Jamar Chase had. But ultimately, I feel like Jamar Chase should be a little bit higher. Maybe just a point to separate those guys because Jamar Chase broke the rookie receiving record. I mean, he just looks like an absolute superstar. I just feel like there should be a little bit more separation there. Then you have guys like Debo Samuel who uh, carried the Niners throughout the playoffs, carried the Niners throughout the entire season. I know that running back thing, you know, ratings don't necessarily come into play when it comes to a receiver, but I still feel like he's kind of low. I mean, why would he be below guys like Michael Thomas, guys like uh, Keenan Allen? I think at the very least, Debo Samuel should be behind DeAndre Hopkins or maybe even tied with him. I feel like you could argue that after the year Debo had, he could easily be considered a top five receiver in Madden, uh, even with a guy like Stefan Diggs, who had kind of a down year last year compared to his monster year the year before that. But ultimately, Debo Samuel is one of the biggest stars in the league right now after the season that he had. Uh, I think it's a little surprising to see him below a guy who hasn't even played in two years of Michael Thomas. So that to me is a little bit ridiculous. Uh, but other than that, I really don't have much issue with any of the uh, the ratings on this list. Uh, one that is kind of worth calling out is Cooper Cup coming in at 99 overall. I know a lot of people were wondering, what will Cooper Cup's rating be this year? I mean, the guy did everything he could do last year. He won the Triple Crown. He had one of the best receiving years of all time. He was Super Bowl MVP, Super Bowl winner, uh, Offensive Player of the Year. So I'm glad to see him coming in at 99. Ultimately, if you go by consistency, though, because he really only had one monster year, every other year was kind of on the average side. I think he broke a thousand yards only once in his career before this point. Running backs, uh, I'm not going to go over these guys too much. Um, I'll just pick out, you know, we're just going to go straight to the top 20. They have 32 rated here, but I'm not going to go through all the uh, the running backs. Running backs aren't as big as stars as they were in the past. Uh, last year, I made a big stink when I made this video about Ezekiel Elliott being in the top 10. He's finally fallen out of the top 10. I, all I said last year, and a lot of Cowboys fans had issues with it, is that the guy was clearly on the decline. And this year, he really didn't do too much once again. Another guy that I have an issue with being rated too high is another guy from the NFC East, and that's Saquon Barkley. He's coming in in an 80 seven the guy hasn't really done anything in the NFL pretty much since his rookie year maybe the his second year in the league um, the guy is uh, you know he's had a slew of injuries I'm not sure if he's necessarily never going to come back and be a productive player but at this point he shouldn't be rated this high he shouldn't be a top 10 running back over guys like Najee Harris there's a lot of guys here that have had more success recently that I think should be uh, rated over Saquon Barkley obviously Najee Harris has the exact same rating so you could easily flip-flop that but ultimately Barkley is just a name 
name at this point. He really doesn't hold a lot of cachet. Christian McCaffrey, falling from grace a little bit. Once again, injuries, these things tend to happen. He was a 99 not too long ago. Uh, he's kind of in the Saquon Barkley camp. Like, you kind of wonder, what does he still have? Is he still that same dynamic player? I really doubt it. I have no problem with the top five after that. So, that's it. That's the vid. If you guys want to see uh, more vids like this, as always, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.